So guys, if you like my videos, comment below, give me a thumbs up and share my video. It helps get my YouTube channel out to other people so my YouTube channel can grow. I thank you all who are my um, frequent viewers. I thank you for your support and your kind words. Hi guys, it's Carrie with Rock and G Farm. Thanks for joining me tonight for our second part of the 2021 Christmas cookie and baking countdown. So here on the farm, we are going to make peanut um, butter cookies tonight. And the other night we made banana bread. Um, I really like the peanut butter cookies. They're one of my favorites and my dad used to make them when I was growing up. So tonight we're going to do that. I have enough, some more of them cooking actually in the oven because when I did my first video, for some reason, my video wasn't going. So I had to make a second second batch, but that's okay because I'm planning on giving these away as gifts to um neighbors and friends and business um, acquaintance that um, we frequent their businesses. So tonight, the recipe for our peanut butter cookies um, came in the book with my KitchenAid mixer. It had a recipe book with it. And so we're gonna use that recipe tonight. So tonight we are going to have something on here. Um, we're going to use a half a cup of peanut butter, a half a cup of butter. I don't cook with margarine. I don't eat margarine. Just don't like that. I like the more natural foods. Um, we are going to use a half a cup of granulated sugar and a half a cup of packed brown sugar. We're using a half a teaspoon of vanilla, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and one and one quarter cups of all-purpose flour. So the first thing that we're going to do is put our peanut butter and our butter into our mixing bowl. Now I've had all of my ingredients sitting out so they all could become room temperature because remember when you're cook when you're baking um, you're making a chemical reaction and if your ingredients are different temperatures they will not combine well with each other and then you won't have the best product that you could have so my butter has been sitting out for a while and what you want to do for your butter to be the consistency you need for sitting out, you want it to make kind of like a little fingerprint once you press in. You don't want to sink in to where your finger goes halfway through the um, stick of butter. You just want to be able to make a fingerprint on the top real, real easy. So that's nice and, and warm, room temperature. So I'm going to put that in my um, mixing bowl. And then we're going to put a half a cup of peanut butter. And I used the extra crunchy. Hold on. Let me get this. Let me get these second ones out. Oh yeah, so here's the second batch that I've already put in. So we're gonna mix some more on that. Let those sit over there and cool. Okay, I did when you cook, you need to also preheat your oven. So I didn't preheat it right now, but I preheated it before I put those other cookies in it. So you preheat your oven to 375 because you don't want to have all of your cookies ready to go into the oven and have a cold oven because then you have to wait for like, what is it, 15 minutes for it to warm up and that's just boring and just more time. So always preheat your oven while you're making your product. So what, what we're doing now, we're, we're talking about the peanut butter. So I've got a half a cup of extra country peanut butter. And um, I normally would not let you mound the peanut butter like this, but I want my cookies to taste real peanut buttery. And so I just wanted to mound a little bit more on there. Um, if it's gonna, if I'm gonna eat a cookie, 
it better taste like peanut butter. Um, because what's the point in trying to eat a cookie if it doesn't taste like peanut butter? I won't eat it. It's not worth the calories. This is not worth it. But I'm also going to put in one teaspoon of this organic powdered peanut butter just to give it some extra peanut butter flavor. That's all I'm going to do with that. We'll do that when we put the flour in. So now what I'm going to do is get this peanut butter and butter all creamed together. So I'm going to put it on my mixer. There we go. And I'm going to get my paddle and put my paddle on. And my husband, when I had one of my surgeries, he bought this mixer for me while I was... Um, in my healing process so that just kind of touched me that he was so thoughtful to get me something that i really had been wanting for several several years and now i've had it for several years and use it all the time it is amazing it makes your baking go so much faster because it's just high powered and you can get in there and get stuff done and i really like that so we're going to go ahead and turn this on and cream the peanut butter and the butter together <laughs> So now I'm just going to use my spatula, and I know I'm saying spatula, it's spatula, I know, but in the South we say spatula, we add a lot of R's to the end of a lot of words here in the South. So I'm just going to get that mixed up peanut butter and butter off the edges of the mixing bowl. Okay, so now what we're going to add, we're going to add the one egg, the sugars, and the vanilla. So here is my one egg, and this is a farm fresh egg that I open or I cracked into a separate bowl. So if it was um, spoiled or something was going on with it, it would not mess up all of my other ingredients. I've done that before, had all my ingredients for a chocolate chip cookies in there. I ran out of eggs, needed one more egg, sent my daughter to the neighbor to get an egg, cracked it in my bowl and it was green. So I had to throw all the way and then we ended up not being able to make anything because I had already put all my stuff in there and I was out of all of my ingredients. So I learned my lesson on all farm fresh eggs, you always want to crack them in a different bowl and just to make sure that there's nothing, they aren't bad or anything like that. So here's my one egg. And then we are adding the sugars. So this is a half a cup of granulated sugar. And this is a half a cup of brown sugar. When you are cooking with brown sugar, you always want to make sure that you pack your brown sugar. You don't want to just scoop it in and then toss it. When you pack your brown sugar, it should look like this when you are done, done with it and fixing to put it in the bowl. You actually want it to be formed. And then that means that you've packed your brown sugar really well and that's what you need to do. So we did that. Now we just need to add our vanilla. Now, when you do cook or bake, it's best that you try to use the best ingredients that you can get. Um, I've got pure vanilla. I'm not gonna cook or bake with an imitation van vanilla because it just won't taste as good as it could. And if you're gonna eat cookies, you want them to taste the best they can. So anyway, we're going to use a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And this stuff smells amazing. Oh my gosh. Say so half a teaspoon right there. Now, 
for all of y'all who still need to get some Christmas gifts. If you know someone who likes to cook or bake, it would be a good gift to go out and buy a big jar of pure vanilla for your baker in your life. They will love you because pure vanilla is very expensive and they will understand that you put a lot of thought into it and a lot of money into it. So that would be a good, good gift. So let's go ahead and get these eggs and sugars and vanilla incorporated into our peanut butter in our batter. We've got that in. So now we are going to add, add our flour and our soda and our salt. So here is our flour. And if none of you have seen this before, this is a sifter. And when you are baking with flour of any type, you really need to sift your flour. What that does, it aerates your flour and makes it not clumpy and hard and dense. It puts a lot of air in it and makes your baked goods fluffier and not so dense and heavy. So this has a mesh screen on the bottom and it has like this little fan thing that when I push the button, it goes around and around and pushes down that um, flour. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just going to do it into my bowl and I did a little bit already and it just makes it come out and it makes it real, real light and fluffy. And that's what you want. Anytime you are baking, you really need to sift your flour. As you can see those little tines on the bottom moving. And then one thing on your sifter, you never, ever, ever want to put it into water because there's always gonna be just a little bit of flour left in here. And if you put it into water, that flour is going to turn hard as a rock and it's gonna run your sifter. So just kind of tap, tap, tap it, and then wipe it off with a clean dish towel to get all the remnants of the flour off because you're, it's not dirty. It just had flour go straight through it. Um, so don't ever set it in water because you'll run your sifter. Also, if you do not have a sifter, you can always use a strainer. Like if you have a small mesh strainer like this, you can sit it over a larger bowl, which I would do a larger bowl than this because it, remember it will come out the sides here, not just the bottom. And just pour your flour in here and just kind of fluff it up and down and that'll sift your, your flour also because if you don't have a sifter on hand. Okay, so now we're going to add one and a half or one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. And you just want to kind of put it in there very gently because you just added air to it and you don't want to pack it down because that would defeat the purpose of sifting it and making it light. Okay, so there. And so when you have your flour after you're done you can get your spoon and just kind of go back and forth and you're just going to push off the top edge so that it is level and so there's my one cup of flour and then I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of salt and I've already got those measured out here I'm gonna put that right on top of that flour so it'll mix in really well. Move my flour out of the way. And then we're going to mix this up really well. And I'm gonna go kind of slow at the beginning so my flour doesn't make a puff of cloud and I have flour all over my kitchen. Now I'm just going to put 
a teaspoon of this peanut butter powder in there and just shake it right there by the paddle and just let that mix that in really well so that I can have a lot of flavor. making the batter and then we'll just put it on the cookie sheets. Okay, now I've got my cookie sheets ready. I've lined them with parchment paper. It makes it a lot easier to get the cookies off of the cookie sheet and um, it makes it a lot easier for cleanup. So the way I make my cookies onto my um, cookie sheet is I use a scoop. My scoop is kind of a little small, but I just kind of double it up a little bit and then just kind of drop it on the um, parchment paper and stick a little bit. And we're gonna make these probably about two inches wide, a little bit more on that one. I think my scoop has probably seen its better days. It was fine a while ago, but now it's kind of not like in life. Okay, drop it down. After I've got them all scooped out onto the tray, I'll pick them up and just kind of make them into little balls. So you just softly just roll them in your hands. And then I'm gonna drop the balls back down onto the cookie sheet. And these are gonna be good because they are like, I can tell the butter in here is like all over. I can see it on them, it's glistening and it's gonna be awesome. And they smell amazing. Lots of peanut butter flavor. And then if anybody would like to tell me why we smash our peanut butters down with a fork, I'd like to know that because that's just a thing that I'd like to know because I mean, Who's not eating a peanut butter cookie that's been smashed down with a fork? I think that's the only way I've ever eaten a peanut butter cookie. Huh. Well, let me get my fork. Okay, and then we're just going to smash once in the center and just kind of pull it out once in the center. And pull it out, just kind of smash them down to they're probably about the same um, height as each, they're all kind of the same height so that one's not really flat or one's not really fat and then they'll cook unevenly. So just try to make them the same. I'm trying to push the ends in when I pull them out, it kind of want to come out with me and make a long cookie instead of a circle cookie. There we go. And the last one. We'll get these into the oven. And we are cooking them in an oven at 375 for 
10 to 12 minutes. So I will put them in there for 11 minutes just because I know about the time, how the timing works on my oven. So let me put those in here real quick. Okay guys, my timer has gone off and it looks like they are really, really good. I'm going to, ooh, that one, let's see. I'm going to sit them up here and let them cool for a while. If I leave them in too much longer, I'm afraid that they'll get hard and I don't like hard cookies. I would rather my cookies be a little bit on the softer side. So I'm putting our next batch in, putting them in for 11 minutes. 